Boom, coming in hot. Chinch, how you doing, man? What's going on, brother? Oh, I was just saying before we came on, I'm having a good day, man. I'm feeling good today. And, nice, uh, dude. Why? Why are you feeling good, dude? I don't know. I just jumped out of bed. You ever just jump out of bed? And I, I got like <laughs> nine things done before we started today. I, I got, I don't know, I just got a lot of errands running. Yeah, it feels good to get stuff done. It does. I feel like like yeah. I've accomplished so much today. It's 1237 Eastern. Yeah. Oh, I got that. That's so great. Recycling's coming if you hear a noise in the background, folks. I apologize. <laughs> hey, you're going to get your hair cut today, but I was saying to you before, you shouldn't get yeah. it cut, dude. I haven't, I'm having a good hair day, too. I got, dude, you're having have. a great hair day. You got, you got, a, you got a little bit of the, uh, the, the wisdom white. I like to call it the wisdom white coming in on the side. I love it, dude. I, I, I'm actually <laughs> into it. I, I like the way it looks. You have it. I mean, yeah. you, you're. You're oh, legit. I got it! I got it! I got it coming in like the got, silver fox. Bro. You got Polly <laughs> Walnut sideburns. <laughs> 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 he has the best. He was like streaks. <laughs> Paul Wall is so good, dude. Yeah. What a show! Uh, what a show! Nice dude, guy. hang on. I got. I got a quick surprise for you. Okay. I, hang he, on a second. Right. Sean did say he has a surprise for me, but he wasn't. I don't know what's going on here. He's walking. He's he's in the other side of this spacious. I'm I'm naked. I'm naked. Oh, <laughs> if you come back naked, that'll be. Maybe we'll get some more followers by then. All right, ready, Chase, ready. <gasps> what is this? Boom! Coming in hot, Chinch. I got my name on a shirt. <laughs> the boom coming yes! in hot shirt, Chinch are in. Oh my God, Case, you did not tell me about this. <laughs> I Holy know, dude. Shizzle. I'm we trying gotta, not to we, curse. Dude, we, we, we got we got to get a mayor's office, uh, dude. Sight going. Isn't that awesome? And then I got this. What's Oh, it's got the logo on the back. Here you go. Mayor's office logo. Boom, coming in hot chance. These are going to be sell. Holy, these are going to sell like hot like cakes. Hot dude. cakes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, yeah, oh like, so the bat, like the Batman boom. Dude, this is unbelievably awesome. <laughs> this really is a great surprise. Got to give a shout out to Sarah on these. She she designed them. And then my buddy dude. Mark Gaither delivered the goods, bro. Yeah. Delivered how the how goods. do I explain this to folks at home? Okay, so it's a white shirt. The boom, it's almost like a, like the Batman slap. Batman. It's yeah. like the Batman slap where like there's a background that's red that's like got the explosion. <laughs> the boom is in yellow with a beautiful, beautiful yeah. uh, black drop shadow. And underneath it says in little script coming in hot, <laughs> Chinch, I got my name on a shirt. I made it. <laughs> You finally made it, Chinch. It's not It's not oh. all the good things you've done in this industry. You finally got a shirt, <laughs> your own shirt. Way more than the 11 Emmy Awards. By the way, yeah, I do have 11 yeah. Emmy Awards. Fine. Dude, no, Emmy, no big deal. It's no big deal. <laughs> but then I got, I got a new mayor's office shirt, too. I got oh, look one. at that one, too. Oh, beautiful. Oh, nice font. Sarah's yeah. so good at that stuff, dude. She's great, dude. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to send those out to you, bro. I got some hats. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you a bunch of these for your family. All right. You know what? Friends. Maybe, should, we, should we get some merch going? We probably should. How are we going to do it though? Like, wait, okay, wait, I'll wait, do wait. it. I will do it. All right, all right, all right. Well, what do we do? Tell people to send. Uh, no, we got to put it. Don't you have a website? Why don't we put it on your website? Or is that too too corny for you for a rich guy like you? I'll I'll <laughs> figure it out. I, maybe we'll put our our merch thing on a on a on a on the YouTube page or something. And and that and then maybe some of you jerks who never go to our YouTube page. <laughs> I like and go. subscribe. Yeah. You, how about this? We'll put the merch thing. You have to be liked. You have to like and subscribe. Subscribe. On our YouTube page. And then you can buy and Mayor's then, Office merch. Yes, exactly. Right. That's that the sounds plan. Sounds good. Wow. If you want a if you want a boom coming in hot chin shirt, dude. And or a mayor's office shirt, you I gotta go I to I you, am, subscribe on YouTube. We'll probably have two people subscribe, dude. <laughs> dude, I I'm, I'm really I'm very excited about this. I'm very excited. I gotta send Sarah a note. Dude, oh Jess goodness. is gonna love these. Dude, she Jess is. is gonna love these. My my my, fa my father in law, who who who's a very outspoken person in the greatest way in the world, he's like, "How come your name's not on any shirts you get? How come your name's not?" I'm like, "Cause I'm not showing sure Casey. No one knows who the hell I am." Jerry. Anyway, all right. Um, dude, this is our this is our trademark. This is our this I'm, is our trademark. Boom, I'm coming tripping. in hot chips. Dude, it is funny though. We have been doing that since day one, haven't we? Did they, yeah. was that? We're at 273 shows. You've done it every single day. I've done it every show. Like it was just, it was obviously organic. And now mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's like. Yeah, the best, my favorite one was when you sat in front of Leland and Leland was like, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> like, boom, 
Boom coming in. Ah, what is this shit? Hey, baby. Hey, baby. What's going on? Hey, baby. <laughs> I mean, bro, what yeah. do you mean, boom coming in hot? Hey, hey, hey. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm so, I'm so excited, dude. Thank you. I feel like that's <laughs> like a, a blessing for me more than anybody else. All right. Heck yeah, dude. We have so, that's awesome. Let's keep the momentum rolling. We have so much to okay. talk about today. Let's do it. Dude, let's, let's talk. Let's, since we're staying on the chinch theme. <laughs> You got a you got a good yeah. you got a good story today with about you know you rowing back Randy Johnson. Yes. Okay. So today is the nineteenth nineteen year anniversary of Randy Johnson's perfect game. Okay. I got a little backstory for it, and I'm going to take you guys inside what baseball tonight was like back then, which is really cool. This is why I'm excited to tell the story. So, game started. He, he started at seven thirty six p.m. It was in Atlanta. So it was an East Coast game. It was actually the Turner game. That was back when Turner just started doing, like, the games, Um, the national games. All right. Here's a cool thing about it. If folks remember, Baseball Tonight used to be on twice a night. There was the 10 Eastern in-game where we did a lot more updates and live look-ins, like, kind of like, well, there weren't that many live look-ins, but the, the... it was more like MLB Tonight is now. It was like the 10 mm-hmm. o'clock show. But then the midnight show was like kind of like the show of record. And then we would just punt on the late games because SportsCenter would pick those up. But so right. it, 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 it was not – I argue that it was actually very more difficult to do baseball tonight in the 90s than it is to do MLB Tonight now, which I'll explain for a couple of reasons. So 10, 10 p.m. show is about to start. And this game only took two hours and 13 minutes. And so that means 8.36, 9.36. So the game was over at 9.45. So the game ended before the 10 o'clock Eastern baseball tonight, which ne- no games would end before 10 o'clock at, at that time. Now, there's myself. There's Chris Rowenbeck, who is now the coordinating producer of, of MLB Tonight. Mark, Shout out to Roney. Yep. Mark Deaver, the director, who was for... Shout out to Deaver. For the most time, the, the best director in baseball right, to the right. left there. Um, and Carl Ravage was a host. Harold was on the desk. And I believe it was John Crook. Peter? But I, Peter? It was either Peter no. or John Crook were the, the analysts. I, I can't recall it now. But here's the cool thing about it. The difference between how things work now and how things work then was there was no digital. There was no – you weren't going on like – YouTube, you weren't you weren't seeing highlights anywhere. There was no MLB tonight where you can get all the games. There were no national games other than like a few. So that's part one. Second part, everything was on tape. Like everything was on a big, they were called digi beta tapes, huge tapes. Jeez. So in order to cut like a feature, like nowadays, and I think kids will understand this part, it's like you can pull video in just right on your computer, whatever. We, you know, we could we could cut a feature in the next five minutes. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Back then, let's just say, you know, if you're if you're looking at any kind of feature on anything, like 60 minutes on baseball, sports, anything, you uh you would have to go and for every clip, even if it was a two second clip, you would have to run to a tape room, get the right. tape, cue it up. Like remember when you had a tape back in the day in the 80s to listen to Michael yeah. Jackson? You would have to fast forward to the next song. So, yeah. you, so you would have to cue it up. So you would go into the tape library with a bunch of bins, go, and you have to, like, the way you would go to a library, oh, this is B4765 is where this game took place, and you would have to run in, get the tape, cue it up while you're looking up other tapes, and a two-second shot to take you 15 minutes to, to find, and you would do that over and over again. Now, on this night, the thing that made Randy Johnson's perfect game crazy was, first of all, Back then, there weren't that many perfect games. We've had a run of perfect games and no-hitters in the last, like, 10 years. So back then, a perfect game was, like, the craziest thing that could happen in in all of sports, maybe, at the time. Right, Right. yeah, 27 up, 27 down. That's part one. Part two, he was 40 years old. The oldest pitcher who had ever thrown a perfect game prior to that was... 40 at the time. Cy Young, who did it at at 37 years old. So now... You know, you look at the, the, the context of all this. We needed to cut two features. Judd Birch was a producer at the time, who, by the way, Judd Birch, if you've ever heard that name before or not, he invented the term web gem, the original producer wow. of Baseball Night. Another little That's fun cool. fact, That's right? Cool. So he wanted two pieces. He wanted a Randy Johnson feature, and these features are like two and a half minutes long. And again, remember, two-second shot is an entire tape. Uh, He wanted a Randy Johnson piece, but he also wanted like a history of the no-hitter piece. 
So there's me and Roenbeck, like 23, 24 years old, who are two clowns at the time. We're clowns now, as you know. <laughs> I'm cutting the Randy Johnson feature. Roenbeck's going to cut the uh, historical feature, right? Coolest thing about this, Carl Ravage, people don't understand how good Carl Ravage is. And I know not a lot of people love ESPN right now and, and anything like that. Carl Ravage is one of the greatest hosts of all time. Very similar to how Amsinger doesn't bring a script, doesn't do anything, and right. just reads and reacts. It's incredible. Yeah. So hard. He was the original, like the original Amsinger. He was he was so good at this. He goes, you guys go start pulling tapes. I'll write the two pieces. So Carl Ravage banged out two features. And now you need statistics. You need everything to all this. He banged them out in like 15 minutes. Had to print them out and get them to us because he couldn't email them to us because nobody really used their email at the time. So me and Roenbeck are in a tape room and we're rolling back and forth <laughs> going with these features. And so then we get into two separate edit rooms. And again, you have to put one tape in. They got to queue it up. They have to cut it onto another piece of tape, dude. So the editor is like cutting onto a tape, taking it out, putting another tape in. We got both pieces done by the end of the 10 to 11 p.m. show. I don't know. I know oh that might God. sound corny to you, but it's just it, it's just such a cool memory. And it was such it a sounds like a, it, no, it really sounds like a miracle. It, no, it <laughs> was like, a miracle. It sounds almost like, yeah. yeah. Like talk about scrambling yeah. with doing the best you can with what you have at the time, the yeah. tools that you have. Yeah. Not close. It would be tough to do that nowadays with the good tools, let alone to have what yeah. you guys had, like the, the dinosaur tools back yeah. in the day. And the, the, the whole biggest point to this for me was that, that, you know, when, when you finish playing a sport, if you're a kid in high school right now and you're not going to play in college, or if you're in college and you're not going to play in the pros, you always try to look for that adrenaline rush that you lose. You had to do it too. That's why you became an analyst, right? Because there's a certain amount of adrenaline that you have in your body that you used for 12 years in the big leagues that all of a sudden it stops. You got to replace that right. energy with something. And those are the times that was like kind of like, that was kind of back when I was a kid, that was kind of like my perfect game in my career. You know what I mean? Like right. that was, that was my, you know, five hit game and stuff like that. That's why I was so psyched to see it this morning. That's awesome. dude. That's, you know, and it's, it's, and it's great. It's cool. How things like that jar your memory of like, where were you? Yeah. Who were you with? Yeah. yeah. When Randy, John, you know, you, yeah, you're working at ESPN. You were young. You, you and Rowan Becker, you know, guys that are new in the industry and bam, you were able to put something together. Like that's cool. Yeah. It's really cool. Anyway. All right. Well, let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling because we have so much else to talk about. That's actually yeah. happened. Last night was, what was it? What was last night? Wednesday? It was walk off yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday. Walk off yeah, Wednesday walk in off. big leagues. Astros Dude. walk off. Blue Jays walk off. Yep. Polar Bear walked it off for the Mets. Where yeah. do you want to start? You take it from me. Incredible, incredible games too. I want to let's start with the Mets, man. Like just uh Alvarez comes up huge. You know, the rookie catcher, the number one prospect in baseball. He comes up absolutely huge with the uh with the three run homer, I believe two outs in the ninth. Two outs in the ninth. Francisco Alvarez hits a three-run bomb to tie it against Crazy. the Rays. Right. So it makes it 5-2, right? And the, and the Mets have been scuffling. Right. No, the Rays come back and score two in the top of the 10th. So the Rays are up 7-5. I mean, how many times do you see the Rays blow two leads mm -hmm. in the end of the game? That's very rare. So 7-5, Polar Bear comes up. Mets get two guys on, hits one second deck. In 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 uh, so City good. Field Place almost comes down. They walk it off. Yep, Polar drop. Bears fired up, dropping f bombs yes. in the post game. I love that. press conference. <laughs> yeah, I love it. You know, yeah, incredible. So that was incredible. Much needed win for the Mets. I mean, huge. Mm -hmm. Then you go out to Houston. Huge knock by Kyle Tucker to, um, to win the game. But you know, you go back and look at look go back and look at that box score, bro. I mean, I think let me let me just make sure I get this right. But I believe that they put up a bunch of runs. Um, it, at the at the end of the game, there. Let me Sorry, see. Let me pull this up. Yeah, it's right here. Here it is. Um, games are already happening right now, dude. Yeah, this is crazy. crazy. Um, yeah. Let me see. They the the Astros in the believe in the uh I'm trying to pull in the too. eighth put up a bunch right here. It is. Yeah, they put up. They were down six to one in the eighth. Mm. So they put up two in the eighth to make it six three, which is like ah, you're, nice job coming back. They score four in the ninth to walk them off, walk off the Cubs. Devastating loss for the Cubs. Huge. They end up sweeping the Cubs with that shot. So, man, it just shows the Astros are a really good team. They're 24-19. We were talking about how they're kind of scuffling. They're starting to hit their stride a little bit. Bregman's uh, swinging the bat again, too. So that was pretty cool. Very cool. And then, and then you have um, 
zero zero game we're, we're, we've been talking about how that rivalry with the blue jays and the yankees is heating up a little bit schneider yeah. and booney too kind of john back yeah. and forth the managers got cold zero zero tie in the 10th mm-hmm. it was in the 10th and jansen danny jansen the catcher who walked it off the other night against the braves uh walks it off three run bomb in the 10th to beat the yankees yeah. so good, in, great in night a, for baseball man absolutely great night for baseball and night. if you're a pirate fan too the pirates won eight nothing <laughs> here and uh and there are people in pittsburgh are still fired up about that yeah. but just a great night for baseball dude great really baseball. At the end of the day yeah and let's keep the momentum rolling on a positive front the best player in mace in baseball might be on the worst team in baseball you dude, brought this up today dude I love this story. If you're not paying attention, start paying attention to Brent Rooker. Brent Rooker, he's he's not a rookie, you know, but he is a rookie. <laughs> but you know, I mean, he's it, the, the story is incredible. Obviously, he wears number twenty five too, which obviously that was big McGuire back in the day. Yeah. But you go back and look at this. He was originally drafted thirty fifth overall at, at a Mississippi State in two thousand seventeen after winning the Triple Crown. In his conference, right? One of the best conferences in baseball wins the Triple Crown. So, dude, Chinch, you know what I say. Mm-hmm. If you rake in the college and then you do in the minors, you're going to rake, rake in the big leagues. You're going to be something to that effect, right, mm-hmm. at the end of the day. So he gets drafted by the Twins. He's dealt to the Padres on April 7, 2022, okay? Mm-hmm. Do me a favor, bro. Go look up this guy's minor league numbers if you can, please. I'm on it. So he gets traded to the he gets dealt to the Padres on the seventh, two thousand twenty two. Goes up there, kind of pinch hits. His numbers aren't great. Then he gets traded from San Diego to Kansas City on August second. Yeah. Same kind of thing. They can't find a spot for him. Blah 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 blah. Then he gets picked up on waivers by the A's, and the A's are like, "We're so bad, we need you to start every day." Well, guess what, bro? Brant Rooker. The numbers that he put up in the minors, this is where I don't understand scouting sometimes. Because if I'm a scout, right. I'm looking at what guys are doing in AAA. If you have over 1,000 OPS in AAA and you're hitting home runs and hitting for average, you're going to be close to that player in the big leagues. Oh, there you Brent go. We Walker. talked about that yesterday. About, right. about, he did that, dude. D- d- did he not? Do you have his numbers up on the, in the minors? Him. Are you ready? Tell me. I'll give you his, his uh, AAA. What is that, Illinois? I don't know where yeah. that was. but Okay, for Kansas City. For Kansas City. This is a pretty pretty good amount of time. 338, <laughs> nine homers, right. 92 plate appearances, 1.199 OPS. Okay. The, in, in the PCL, he hit he had a 990 right. OPS. I mean, the dude is a I mean, the dude was too good. He was too dude. good for the minor leagues. His minor dude. league career numbers, he's got a, right. he had 102 career minor league home runs in just 402 games. Uh, he hit, right. he hit 344 in college with 36 homers and 148 R- RBIs. By the way, college guys don't hit homers like like here in the majors. Right. If you don't know, right, dude? He's legit. Dude, he's 28 now, but but he's he's hitting. Oh, he has over a thousand OPS. Yeah, he's got 11 bombs. Yeah. Dude, he's literally one of the best his, players in the game, his, and he's playing for the A's. So that's why we're not really talking about him. Yeah. But I love the story because it's like, how are these teams just? Give Brent Rooker uh, like a chance to just play. Yeah, there's there's been guys that I've played with, bro. Like I want to be like, give this guy six hundred bat. You know, you know who I think of, dude. Remember Matt Adams with the Cardinals? Yes, he's a guy. I was like, he came up. He raked. He raked in the minors. He was a uh, Division two batting champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, he hit lefties and righties. Comes up to to the Cardinals and oh, you're a platoon player. Mm-hmm. So then for five years, six years, a platoon player, right? Always has that stigma, never really gets going. I want to be like, give Matt Adams 600 ABs for three yeah. years and see what he does. Yeah. I bet you it's pretty special. Like, So a guy like Rooker, dude, it was like me in Cincinnati, dude. I, I thought about me for a second. And the, and the reason I say that is because I was stuck behind Jim Tomey, yeah. Richie Sexton, Russell yeah. Brannion, some big bats. And all of a sudden, it could have been for me for three years. Hey, Case, come on up. You're raking in AAA. Get in a bat now and then. Get a pinch hit. You know, never get in. So then all of a sudden, I'm 27, 28. Now all of a sudden, I'm a guy off the bench. I'm a good pinch hitter. I'm, mm-hmm. I never get the chance to start. Who knows how my career goes? Jim Bowden puts his balls on the line, trades his number one starter for me in 1998. I go to Cincinnati, bro. Yeah. They weren't that good of a team at the time. Jack McKeon's the manager. Yeah. They give me the keys to the city, and they're like, hey, you're our starting first baseman no matter what. 
And dude, that's how my career started. Mm -hmm. But it started because I got the at-bats and I showed, right. did I show it right away? No, I was kind of up and down. I was okay. Yeah. But then I started getting it going. Then the confidence starts to happen. And all of a sudden I start putting up the same numbers in the big leagues I was putting up in the minor leagues. There you go. And they go, man, this kid rakes. I'm like, I've been raking everywhere, but I finally got a shot right. in the big leagues. And that doesn't yeah. happen for everybody, Ten Chinch. Not yeah. everybody gets a shot. You're right. That's a great point, dude. Ten seasons in the minor leagues. He he had 179 minor league home runs, 285 the, career average. Yeah. And you know, rookie ball, the, probably your first two years, your average isn't going to be really where it is because you're just figuring out how to be a professional ball yeah. player. And so he wound up with, like, his last, he's got 330 seasons. He's got three, I mean, the guy's legit. Yeah, it's not, not 10 years in the minor, like six or seven years in oh, the minor. Oh, I'm minors. sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, this yeah. is 10 seasons. This is everything he's ever done. In yeah, the everything league. he's ever done. Yeah, every team. Mind. Yeah, 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 right. Dude. Right. The, the, so those numbers are legit, dude. And that's what I'm saying. So, like, everyone's like, who's this Brent Rooker? Well, guess what? Yeah. Like, he was on MLB Central. D Row did a great breakdown oh, with nice. him. And, and, and basically, Rooker was saying, like, I just needed a chance to get some ABs. Like, and, and D Row was kind of saying, well, it's the same thing with me. He raked in the minors, comes up to the, comes up to the Braves. You got Chipper Jones, you got Raphael oh, for a call. Yeah. Where are you playing? You're not playing anywhere, D Row. Mm -mm. But then he goes to Texas and D Row starts having some good years. Like, no, he got, some, it's not like this wasn't in there. He right. finally started getting some Texas consistent Cubs. ABs. Like it's about rhythm and timing. And yeah. so I just love it, dude. Yeah. And like I said, if you're not paying attention, go check out the A's and Brent Rooker flat out matching this season. One of the best players in the game. Although he's 28, better late than never. Way to do that. That's a great one. And it's great. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yes, better late yeah. than never. You don't have to be 21 years old. Like it's back. Remember five, six years ago, we were talking about it. Like you need the 32, 33 year old. How much grit? You talk about grit. How much yeah. grit does this guy have? Nothing's going to beat him in a majors that he hasn't gone well, through in a minors. Well, that's no. what I'm saying, dude, exactly. And and nothing's going to be like, oh, he's the guy that's passed over. He's the guy that, you know, dude, turns out this guy's legit. And kudos to the A's for for evaluating him the way they sh he should have been evaluated and then giving him the A-Bs, which is great. They, they had a cool thing, too. They were talking about who was a better college player because, like you said, Rooker won the triple crown. Out there, and that what's Mississippi State? Is that the SEC? I believe. I mean, so, it's, a, yes. it's it one was. of the best conferences All out right, there. I'm, 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 I might be dropping the ball on that, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> it is. But at the end of the day, we were, they were talking about who's because Mark Kotze is arguably one of the Mark Kotze, Todd Walker, probably two two of the best college players to ever play. Right. And uh, he would they were asking him who's a better college player, Kotze or or him, and, and he said, well, it's got to be Kotze because Kotze was playing center field and then coming out and closing it out for Cal State Ford. And, wow. That's unbelievable. I'm trying to look where they're from. Anyway, okay. All right, so before we go, I have my surprise. It's not nearly as good as your T-shirt surprise. It's not as good as boom, boom, coming in hot chinch no, T-shirts. I'm so excited about this. Um, but here, this is when I was researching the Randy Johnson thing. I come yeah. across, I, was, I saw some Sports Illustrated stuff, and I started clicking around the vault for Sports Illustrated. Yeah. They used to do something called the questions, and it was mm -hmm. just like five or six questions with guys. I find on August 1st, 2005, the questions with Red's first baseman, Sean Casey. Do you want to hear the questions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give me give me your answers now, and then okay. I'll give you your answers that day, and then we'll call it a day. Um, oh, my God. Great. I'm, this is cool. It is cool, right? Okay. First question. What was your welcome to the big leagues moment? Just, oh, my God. Do you want to just hear it? Uh, for my first at bat? It was not. Oh, my God. It was in 1990. Uh, when, when I homered opening day, 1999. It was not. No. <laughs> this is fun. I it it looks like I don't know myself that well. Okay, you want to hear it? Yeah. Or you want to guess? I walked into the clubhouse, and my locker was next to four-time All-Star. You didn't say four-time All-Star. Your locker was next to Matt Williams. I shook his hand, and he said, congratulations. Oh, yeah. That's when I thought I've made it. That's what you said. Dude, I, dude, I said that story to Will Clark. You did? Oh, that's right. You did. You that's did when I said I walked story. in the clubhouse, and I shook Matt Williams' hand. I was like, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's incredible. All right, cool. All right. That's That's good. Okay, the next one. This is a good one. What was your most embarrassing moment? Now, mind you, this was before the first I hadn't got incident. thrown out from left yet. Correct. Uh, we didn't like to talk My most embarrassing that. moment, playing baseball? Playing baseball. It looks like in the big leagues. This is a big league. You, I'll tell you. I'll uh, give you one hint. You were on a road. Uh, oh, uh, I dropped the ball at Wrigley. It hit, hit me in the glove and popped out. Nope. You know, that's not what you said in 2005. You ready? What, what uh, year was my most... Embarrassing moment. You said it was 1998. Do you want to know where you were playing? Yeah. Colorado. Oh, I know exactly what it was. Two, I was working a great at bat, dude. Fouling balls off. Got to a 2-2 two -two count. 
and the guy threw me a pitch and it was three two and I and I dropped the bat and ran to first base. I got all the way to first I'm like, hey, that's ball three. I'm like, oh shit. Ding ding. And I turned and the crowd was like, you're an idiot on the way back. And I just put my hands up and everyone was like, you're an idiot. That's so ball good. Ball three. Boo. They were booing me. So I was like, that's pretty embarrassing, but pretty funny at the same so time. Good. So good. You got it. That's the one you said there. Okay. This is back then. Favorite off day activity. Now this is 2005. Oh, I would to go to movies. No. <laughs> Really? Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's a simple one. You should know this. It's probably your favorite off day activity now. Oh, play with the kids. Andrew and Jacob go and going to the ballpark and pl and playing yeah. ball with them. At like Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, one thing about being a baseball player the public doesn't think about. The grind? Yeah. Like playing every like 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 playing every night, the mental the the mental Fairly anguish. Close. Fairly <laughs> the mental the mental anguish. <laughs> you were kind of like a, you said you wrote the travel. The game just comes on TV and the Reds are playing the Dodgers in LA, but you don't right. think you don't think how they got there. Good. <laughs> that's right, that's right. The this travel, was yeah. very interesting to me. If I weren't place playing baseball, I'd be Oh my god. Working for Casey Chemical? <laughs> no, you didn't say that. <laughs> Uh, a chef? No. <laughs> Clearly, your thoughts have changed. Hang on a second. Hang on. I, I could, wasn't playing. I could see this being the answer. In 2005, I would be a teacher. Yes, Sean. Good yeah, job. There you go. There we go. If that I was were, too easy. If I were commissioner for a day, I'd. This is like a rule change. I'll give you that as a hint. It, oh, I'd, I'd, I'd get the games to speed up a little bit. No, you said you would shorten the season. Oh, yeah, baby. Let's go back to 144 or 152 or something. There you go. Now, this is, so, again, this is 2005, and then they do little notes on the bottom. Last week, Casey, batting 304, helped the Reds sell a season-high 10,185 walk-up tickets on Saturday for Sean Casey figurine night. Oh, let's go, dude. Yeah. That was probably like the most people that were in the stands that, that year. Tell you, uh, tell you the truth. This. Is that it? That must be well, it. This is, no, oh, that's th I think that, I think this was the figurine. I want to say this was the figurine from the Reds. And then the guy turned it into the guy, an oh, artist no turned way. it into the Tigers. How cool is that? That's very cool. Yeah. I wish I had a figurine. Where's the chinch figurine? Where's my chinch figurine? Oh, I guess I got to get one. Or make one. Hey, you can not, you can hey, make a you, figurine for anybody these days. It's not now like you got a shirt though, bro. Dude, I'm so now excited. You got a shirt. All right, it's all you need. What a day! What a great show! I'm so excited. <laughs> all right, bro. All right, man. I'm going to get a haircut right now. Tighten it I, up. I don't really nice. think you should, but that's okay. Yeah, I need to. I need to, bro. You, don't, right. you, don't, you can't see it. They got a little uh, fuzz coming oh, out. I here, see. You know? Oh, I know what that happens when you're in front of someone. Yeah. Okay. All right, yeah. dude. Sarah, Sarah says something. As soon as Sarah says something, I got to get Oh, you got to do it. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Have a great have a great rest of the day. Great great stuff. And uh, let's figure out how to get the boom yes. chin shirts out there. YouTube. <laughs> right, YouTube. Right. YouTube. Subscribe and download. Yeah. No, wait. Yeah. Subscribe. Like. Right. What do they have to do to, to get on to be able to buy one? Like and subscribe. Like, like and subscribe. subscribe. And we. I know who you, you are. I know who all you are. I know who the subscribers are. <laughs> so if you're not one of them, you don't get a boom coming in. Huh? Chinch. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> so good. It's right. so stupid and so great. All right, brother. All right. Love it, Chinch. I'll Love see you tomorrow, man. All right.